Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm doing a um, demonstration for you today how to make a plaster mould from using clay or you can just stop at the clay um, process. Um, I'm doing this for the Blythe Art Centre online workshops. Okay, um, you can see me at the moment but in a minute I'm just going to be focusing on my hands so you can see what I'm doing. So here we have like a plaster impression um, not plaster, sorry, clay, um, which I've made using, well, my son actually. This is something you could do with children, made using um, Captain America here. So he pressed that into there and left the impression. And then we used the um, clay to make a plaster version of it, which he can then paint or leave as it, as it is. Um, so, but we're going to do something using our hands and flowers um, to make an impression. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I've got my piece of clay here. Okay, this is air drying clay, so if you want to stop at the clay process you can, you don't have to, doesn't have to be fired. So the first thing we're going to do is to make a slab, a layer of clay like what this is, okay? Um, so first of all, I've got a really tiny rolling pin because all my other stuff is in my studio. So I'm just going to roll it out and we need the clay to be the same thickness all the way around. Now, and the the um, deeper the object you're pressing in, the deeper the clay needs to be. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to carry on doing this, making it nice and flat. So I'm going to turn the video off in a minute. I keep rolling and then you'll be able to see it finished. So I'm going to keep going Just using the long pin. Okay, so we've done our handprints, my family and myself. My daughter's really dug her finger in there. She's only one, so she doesn't really know what she's doing. But we're just going to see how this comes out. Um, the thing with clay is you have to be careful because it's got something called silicon in it and you don't want um, lots of silicon dust around so once you've finished making something out of clay to this stage with children I got them to wash their hands afterwards because we don't want to put clay into our bodies um, so that's that part of the process done it's at this stage where we would have actually put in um, Captain America so he would have been pressed in but this time for this we've used our fingers okay so now I've got to this stage now what I'm going to do is to kind of use the fingerprints as kind of part of like a landscape or kind of a flower scape. So I'm going to use these wild flowers and then press them into the clay. I'm just going to press them down there. That's a dandelion. You could use flowers from your garden if you wanted to and get them, I think. Okay, and then you just gently take them out. So I think that one looks like that. And I'm going to use a whole um, buttercup here. So just spend some time like thinking about the arrangement of what it is. I'm overlaying over the fingerprints, so some of the fingerprints will kind of disappear. So this is kind of like a meadow scene, really. I'm going to take that out see that the flowers are taking impressions. I'm going to try and do this big daisy because then I think you'll be able to get an idea of what. So I can see a finger, fingerprint there, so I'm going to pop that in there like that. And then just use, just gently pat it in. You don't need to use Vaseline, some people use Vaseline as a release agent, but um, we don't need to do that. This will just come out nicely. There you go. I don't know if you can see. If I hold it up to the camera a bit, you can kind of start to see the um, prints. So I'm going to finish working on this. I'm going to turn the camera off, and when I'm finished, I'll turn it back on again and show you. So I've spent about 20 minutes or so, sort of pressing the flowers in and arranging it in the way that I want it to look. I found that. Um, the cow parsley and these big daisies work really well and some of the other flowers that I've used you're going to get like lighter marks with so we just see see how it goes okay so the next stage after you've done that you could leave it like this you could just take um, a knife and sort of straighten up the edges however you wanted to 
um, you could always yeah, just run your finger over the edges to make it a bit smoother and then you could leave it at this point and then just let it dry out as um, just as a piece of clay work or you could then make it into a plaster um, relief which, we're, which I'm going to show you to how to do now um, so I've done this bit now I need to build some walls to retain the plaster to hold the plaster in because when we mix plaster up it's in liquid form and then it dries and it goes hard okay so I'm going to set this to one side now and I'm going to use my other bit of fabric because that's easier with the clay so I'm going to make some walls so I've got some clay here which I can use um, people do this in different ways so you want it to the clay to be thick enough so it can stand up by itself okay so I think about a centimeter or so okay I'm just gonna press it down a little bit with my hands and then roll it out straighten these these ends up like that move these bits and cut this bit to the side if you're doing it with children make sure that you do this bit because you don't want to cut their fingers okay so I've made one piece of the wall there now I'm going to show you how to attach it to your clay slab and then I'll turn the video off and I'll make the rest of the walls okay so I'm going to just put that to one side and then I'm going to get, the, get the, my piece of work and I'm going to place it along there. Oh look at that, that's the perfect, perfect size. That was luck, more than judgement. Okay, so I'm going to pop it up there, yeah, press it again, press it in. Just pressing it in from this side, you can see, just pressing it in. And then to make sure it sticks nicely, I'm gonna merge it by using my finger to go down onto the cloth to make sure the plaster isn't gonna run out, okay? So I'm gonna get on and make the other four walls. I'm gonna turn the camera off now. Okay, so I've done three walls. Um, I just want to show you how to do the last one, how to do the corners. So you pop it down and press it, press it in so it makes contact with um, the inside of your box, inside your slab, and then to just do the corners, you just need to kind of merge it like this. You can just do it from the outside, and then just do it from the inside as well. I'll do this corner as well, that's how I've done the corners basically, and then just pressing down the edges so it merges with it. Okay, I've done my walls quite deep. Um, I'm not actually going to make the plaster that deep, but you could do if you wanted to. I straighten my walls off just by cutting with a knife so they're all kind of the same height, just to make it more even. Okay, so I've finished my box now. My box, my using using the clay and these sides it's like kind of retaining walls so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prepare to mix the plaster up okay and then I'll um, turn it back on when I started to do that so now I've got all my stuff out to mix the plaster with and um, it's going to do a bit of health and safety once mixing plaster you need to wear a dust mask I'm working in my garden here this is kind of perfect place because we um, there's plenty of ventilation if you're doing it at home just make sure you keep the windows open okay um so yeah you must wear a dust mask if you've got little children you're doing it with as well they must wear a dust mask the other thing i was going to say about plaster and clay is if you've got dermatitis or eczema then it's best to wear some gloves um, while you're using it because it will make those um conditions worse um so I'm gonna I'm gonna point the camera down now so you can see what my hands are doing. Okay, I've got my mixing bowl here um, for us to use to mix up the plaster in. It's just an old cheap mixing bowl, um, and I've got some water here. I've got um, a thousand millilitres of water, and it's cold because we don't want warm water. Because if we have warm water, the plaster will go off quicker. Okay, 
Um, the plaster will take about 20 minutes to half an hour to go off. Um, one thing I will say about plaster is we don't want to leave our hands in plaster while it's going hot, while it's setting, because it goes hot, it goes so hot that it could burn your skin. So it's okay just to use it and mix it up and work with it, but don't leave your hands in there for a long time while it was setting, that would be a really dangerous thing to do, okay? But generally plaster is safe, okay? As long as you're wearing your dust masks. Um, and I've also got some um, paper here, some scrap paper, which I'm going to use to clean the bowl out afterwards to wipe the excess plaster out and throw it in the bin. Because you don't want to pour plaster down the sink because it would block your sink, okay? So what you'll have to do is to wipe out the bowl as much as you can with the, with the paper and then um, just get some water from the tap and then rinse it out and that should be sufficient, okay, enough. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my dust mask back on now. I'm going to pour the um, water into my bowl. So this amount of water is probably more than I'm going to need for a mould that size. Okay, you could use less. So some people weigh and measure out for plaster, but I don't. I just do it by feel. Okay, so um, and I'll show you how I do that. So because it's quite nice to have somebody to mix plaster with you, but if you're doing it on your own, I can show you how to do it. So what you'll need to do is to have like a scoop or a spoon or something to scoop the plaster into your hand. So I'm gonna take it out of here, this is what it looks like. This is just fine casting plaster. So just any kind of plaster you can buy off Amazon will be fine. Okay, and then you just sieve it through your hands like you were making um, flour basically, you try and get some of the lumps out. Now this is quite old plaster and I can see there's a big lump in there so I'm just going to take that out, put that to one side. Scoop, sieve some more fruit. Now I'm going to have to keep doing this for quite a long time and um, until little mountains start to appear on the surface. So basically the plaster doesn't start to um, dissolve into the water so much okay so it's going to take quite a lot of scoops and as so as i'm doing this i'm going to turn the um, camera off right now i can see that the plaster is starting to settle on the surface much more now um, i'm going to test it and have a look see how we're doing yeah that seems quite good to me so now what you need to do is put your hands in and just get any lumps out and rub the plaster together so it's nice and smooth Okay, if there's any bits in there, just take them out. Um, now what you want is the plaster to cover your hand like a glove. So that's like the real test that we're going to do. So I'm going to have a look, see. Yep, so that's covering my hand like a glove, that plaster. So I know that it's the right thickness now. So it's somewhere between single and double cream. So that's done, and I can see that I've made heaps, which I always tend to do. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the excess plaster off my hands. A minute, I'm gonna use an old rag to do that. Okay, it'd be a good idea if you had like a bowl of water next to you to be able to do this, actually. So okay, so I've made my plaster. Now what I'm going to do is to pour it into my mould, okay, so I'm going to out of the way and I'm going to just pour it in slowly, I'm going to pour it in so it just covers the surface and then I'm going to give it a tap and this gets all the air bubbles to come to the surface and for the plaster to make its way into all the little crevices. So I'm going to just add a bit more. your mould starts leaking at this point, springing out any bits of plaster, you can just get a bit of clay and block the hole up with a bit of clay, okay? So don't panic. Yes, I'm just giving it a tap, getting those air bubbles to the surface. Actually there's not that much plaster left, 
there's a little bit so I didn't do too badly right okay now I'm going to leave that for like half an hour it's quite warm outside here so it would definitely be dry in half an hour and then I've come out come back out and then remove the the clay now you have to remove the clay when it's still wet otherwise the clay is going to dry and it's going to be really difficult to get it out to get the plaster out out of the clay okay so I'm going to go and have some lunch now and when I've had my lunch I come back and take the um, clay walls out so I've left this for about an hour and it's dry to touch now so now we're going to take it off and see what it looks like and this is the exciting bit so you just remove the clay walls I should just peel away quite easily that's the thing about doing it when the clay is still wet you wouldn't be able to do this if it was hard okay goes to one side and then if you kind of lift it off of the plastic and then you just need to sort of slowly pull the clay away from the plaster and start to unravel itself okay so let's have a look yeah I'm quite pleased with that you can see the fingerprints and you can see the flowers so that's it finished um, at this stage now you could use like a toothbrush um, to kind of like clean it a little bit and get some of the extra clay out of it um, also got the clay version as well which you can leave that to dry out because it's air dry clay so you've got two for the price of one um, I've got like a little dentist tool that I use to get the ex excess bits of clay out which is like this one here but you could use a pin to do the same thing to take out the excess bits of clay. I've got some of the poppy, um, not poppy, the um, daisy um, pollen stuck in there, but I don't actually quite mind that. I think it looks quite nice. And then also at this stage, it, the clay is actually still soft, so it's not completely dried out. It's just um, touch dry. So you can use um, this is like a little chisel, but you could use a knife if you use it safely just to carve the edges so it's straighter if you want to we can leave it organic the way that it was that's it it will take a couple of days to completely dry out for it to be um, completely dry because at the moment you can still feel that it's some of the water is still inside the plaster it hasn't um, completely evaporated yet so that's it um, all finished um, just remember to read the health and strategy instructions of plaster and clay before you use them and um, you can get those products from amazon or any other craft shop okay thank you bye